I'm Lu Chen Wen. I'm a PhD student from the Colorado School of Mines. Today, I'm going to present our work, Dumpster Shuffle Theoretic Learning of Indirect Speech Check Comprehension Forms. And this is an extended abstract based on work we published at IIII 2020. So, um, for robots to successfully serve as members of human robot team, it is crucial for robots to correctly understand the intentions of their human teammates. And this is especially important in contexts that have strong social culture norms, since in such contexts, humans typically phrase their language in the form of indirect speech acts, in which the speech act's literal meaning does not match its intended meaning. For example, in this restaurant context, the human says, I would like some water. While this alternance may literally be a sharing of information, as a human listener, we can easily infer the speaker's true intent, which is they're ordering some water. Accordingly, robot must be able to infer the intended meaning behind their teammates' alternances. Otherwise, if the robot is not able to understand this indirect speech act, like this situation shown on the screen, it may bring negative impacts on human robot team and eventually her her team performance. In this work, we will show how recent work on Dempster Schaeffer theoretic norm learning, which was originally developed for social and moral norm learning, can be also applied to learn social cultural politeness norm. Some people may ask, what is this Dempster Schaeffer theory? This uh, Dempster Schaeffer theory is a belief theoretic uncertainty processing framework. And it is often interpreted as an extending traditional Bayesian frameworks with the ability to directly express both uncertainty and ignorance. A basic social cultural linguistic norm could be represented as an expression of this form, where U represents an alternance, C represents a possibly empty set of contextual condition, and I represents a possible intention that can be inferred from alternates U and contextual condition C. Then we leverage dempster Sheffer theory to enable uncertainty and ignorance sensitive representations by associating a dempster Sheffer theoretic uncertainty interval with each norm. Consider an example in which an agent X needs to determine agent Y's intentions from this alternance, I could use some water, on the two different contextual condition. C1, X is working as a waiter in a restaurant where Y is a customer. C2, X and Y are working out together at a gym. Within the given restaurant scenario or the exercise scenario, Agent X can reasonably infer two intentions. I want Y wants X to believe that Y is thirsty, and I too, Y wants X to get Y some water. Then we can leverage those intermediate representations in the formulation of belief theoretic norms in order to form a, a norm system. The lower and the upper bound of the interval associated with each norm indicates the level of support or evidence for that norm. Thus, in this example, norm one has a tight in uncertainty interval with a low degree of belief, indicating the agent is certain that this norm does not apply. Norm two with a tight uncertainty interval with a high degree of belief, indicating the agent is certain that this norm does apply. Norm 3 also has a high degree of belief, but a wider interval, indicating belief that the norm applies, but with a higher degree of ignorance. And norm 4 has a wide uncertainty interval centered on 0 0.5, meaning that the robot has conflicting evidence for and against this norm holding. Uh, with a high degree of ignorance. By using this belief theoretic norm for intention reasoning, the robot needs to know the exact numbers for each uncertainty interval. Thus, the norm learning problem now becomes a parameter learning problem. To learn this uncertainty interval for social cultural linguistic norms, we begin by gathering human data in a two-stage experimental process. First, we conducted an online study to identify candidate indirect speech check comprehension norms. 
in this study, participants were asked to write down everything they could think of uh, that the speaker might have meant by a presented sentence. The table on the right shows all 19 utterances used in this experiment. All of these indirect speech acts were phrased to invoke a context in which speakers regularly expect social cultural politeness norm to be used when interacting with a robot. We collected 178 total response from 163 participants, comprising 25 unique intentions. The two tables here below is a subset of result from this generation experiment, collected for two different utterances. Could I have some noodles? And I could use some noodles. Then we move on to the second experiment to collect training data that could be used to learn uncertainty intervals for the norms identified in the previous experiment. Specifically, in this experiment, we collected human judgment as to whether different intentions were appropriate for different utterances in different scenarios. As shown in the table, four, uh, all four scenarios were generated based on the sentences used in the first experiment. And each scenario was a combination of an environmental context and a social context. In this experiment, instead of using all 19 utterances, we selected five sentences which are highlighted in the table. Um, each sentence was presented with six possible intentions collected from the generation experiment. After reading the description of a scenario, participants were asked to select all intentions that they believe to be interpretation of the presented sentence. For each sentence, we first select two most frequently list, listed intentions for that sentence from the previous experiment as highlighted in the table below here. And then we randomly sampled for other intentions from the distribution over all other intentions. For this experiment, we recruited 37 participants from a college campus and collected 74 data points. Now that we had the training data, we will then move on to the learning process. The algorithm we use for norm learning take one data instance at a time and update the corresponding parameters, then move on to the next iteration. A data instance includes a norm frame in which every norm has the same alterance and the same set of context or condition. To use the data collected in the experiment two, we begin by categorizing the data into subsets reflecting different norm frames. Specifically, four different types of norm frame were created based on the experimental context we use in the detection experiment, representing different level of contextual specificity. For each of these norm frames, we provided all data subset to the norm learning algorithm in order to learn uncertainty intervals for each norm in that frame. Here are the results from the norm learning algorithm, showing convergence of two different norms within different type of norm frames to different uncertainty intervals. The dots represent the main norm endorsement by experimental participants. Now that we learn uncertainty intervals for each candidate norm, our next step is to select a subset of justifiable norms that could be uh, inclu included in the final norm system. In this paper, we examined the effect of selecting only the subset of norms for which the center of the norm learned uncertainty interval is above some threshold T. This figure on the right here shows the total accepted norms declines as the threshold T is increased. If a lower value of T is chosen, a greater number of norm will be learned, but the agent may need to generate a greater number of clarification requests in the future. If a higher value is chosen, a few norms will be learned, but the agent may need to generate fewer clarification questions in the future. While we have demonstrated how sensible uncertainty intervals for social culture norm, a linguistic norm can be learned offline from human data, a number of challenges still remain for future work. 
In the future, we want to enable the long-term maintenance of knowledge representations necessary for natural human robot dialogue. Therefore, we need to figure out how to identify and generate candidate in the recipe chat comprehension norm and how to adapt those norms to facilitate lifelong learning. Also, future work must demonstrate the efficacy of learned norms on physical robotic platforms in interaction with real users. Uh, thus, we plan to encode our learned norm uh, within the pragmatic norm base used by the direct architecture and access the fluidity and task su success of robots interacting with user on the norm system selected with different thresholds. And that's all for this talk. And please reach out to us if you have any questions or thoughts. Thank you for your time. Great. Um... Shuali has a question uh, on the chat, on the okay. um, channel, on the Slack channel. And she asks, in, the, in terms of the experimental setup, how many data points did each participant provide? Do you think that you may get different norms with different intention context, asking for noodles? Uh, or are they general enough to apply broadly to other types of HRI? Um, uh. To answer the first question, um, so in the experiment one, the generation experiment, um, uh, the, the data point that uh, a person provides depend on how many intentions they write down for each sentences. Uh, as for experiment two, the uh, detection experiment, uh, we show uh, each participant two different scenarios. So um, that was, there will be, um, two data points provided for one participant. And um, could you repeat the, the, the second question sure. again? Sure, uh, let's see. Uh, do you think that you may get different norms with different intention context, intention. asking for noodles? Uh, or are they general enough to apply broadly to other types of HRI? Uh, so uh, currently in our experimental setting, we only uh, as we show the in the previous slides, we only select like narrow it down to nineteen utterances in like oh. in a very like narrow experimental setting. However, um, in our um, in our vision, it, it could be since we uh, we this research is about the general um, linguistic norms. So, uh, as for conventionalized indirect speech check. Uh, we believe that our approach could be um, like extend to all of the conventional in the recipe chat in your general setting. Yeah. Okay, yeah, she, she um, clarified her question a little bit and said, I mean, what would happen if you asked for pass on the platter, the plate, pass on the plate? Um, uh, pa pa pass on the... Pass on the plate. Oh, um, like without... Well, like without like talking about the noodles and asking about different objects. Yeah, I think that's what she's getting at. Ah, uh, okay. Then in this case, if if it's under like our current like the the small norm system in our we using for this experiment, then the robot probably uh, cannot uh, like understand this in the recipe chat because that's not in the norm system, and and we in order to like for the robot to understand like all the in the recipe chat. That's we also, like like we mentioned in our uh, future work the first point that we need to figure out so like how to like in like not just let the robot learn like the uncertainty interval the the prim, uh, uncertainty interval of that norm but also learn like how to generate like norm yeah, yeah. So, yeah. okay so I want to remind everyone to go to